Donald Trump's decisive win in Florida with a margin of about 134,000 votes over Hillary Clinton is perhaps the key reason he is heading to the White House these days. More on the Florida factor from two power players in the state's political and economic arenas, billionaire investor Jeff Vinnick uh, and the Tampa Mayor Bob Buckhorn. Gentlemen, uh, you're both partners. Welcome. Good to have you with us. Partners, Thanks. business and politics. Mayor, let me start with you. What, what went wrong for the Democrats in Florida? Tampa voted for Mrs. Clinton. Hillsborough County did. Yeah. But he didn't, he, she didn't carry it. We, well, Tyler, it's, it's an interesting observation. I think what we saw was that the entire swath from the panhandle all the way down to South Florida in the middle portions of the state uh, went for Trump and went heavily for Trump. The numbers in the urban areas, Broward, Palm Beach, Dade County, Hillsborough County, Orange County, uh, the margin she ran up there was not enough to overcome a big, big turnout of working class, largely white uh, folks. So what does the Democratic Party need to do to reclaim, for example, the state of Florida or to reach out to the voters that Mr. Trump was able to uh, connect with? Well, I think we need to have a message that resonates with working class folks. I mean, we can't be um, focused on identity politics. We can't be focused on uh, ginning up new voters necessarily. That's part of the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, but clearly the message was not resonating in working class America. And it wasn't just Florida. It was in some of the heartland states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. We have to speak to their hopes and their aspirations as well. And that message has got to be all encompassing, but it's also got to be an economic message. One of your partners in, in, in building the economy in Tampa is Jeff Bennett, right here. You just heard Congressman Capuano, whom I assume you're familiar with from Massachusetts, from your days up there, talk about the need for infrastructure development. You're doing a huge development down in downtown Tampa, mixed use and so forth. Yes. How do you see infrastructure and what would be the best way to get it going from the point of view of a developer, a guy who's deeply, deeply involved in a local economy? You know, you know, when I look at infrastructure, uh, it, it, it's all kinds of things. It could be technology infrastructure. It could be gigabit economy. It can be, obviously, transportation infrastructure. It can be water infrastructure. These are all critical things for the United States in the years ahead. And I'm happy to see that there's actually bipartisan uh, support for incre increasing infrastructure. I'll stay out of the politics of it. I'm not going to figure out how we pay for it, et cetera. Uh, hopefully, uh, in Washington, they can, they can come to agreement of that. You know, within the, the Tampa and the Tampa Bay area, infrastructure is also very important, especially moving people around. Uh, we have a mayor here who's been incredibly pro-business. Pro uh, and when you come down to it with what we're trying to do with our development, with what Mayor Buckhorn is trying to do, it's all about having a faster-growing economy in the region, more jobs, better jobs, more economic activity. I'm very bullish here for the years ahead. You know, there's been a lot of talk of, of getting the business community, investors like you, involved yep in what in a big way in whatever gets done on infrastructure how do you see business fitting into the infrastructure spending and how would you feel as a citizen as a business person if the result of infrastructure spending is to expand the deficit and national debt uh, those are big questions that uh, huge I may questions. not have all the answers on. Uh, I do think there is an opportunity both within Tampa and nationwide, et cetera, for uh, public-private partnerships. Um, you know, they're not always easy to put together. Uh, the economics have to be worked out. But I do think there's always that opportunity. You know, in terms of the deficits in this country, and uh, Tyler, I wasn't ready for that one, but I'll give you yeah. my best shot right, at good. it. No, no, no. Uh, you know, deficits have come down to reasonable levels. Uh, they are expected to increase over time with uh, health care growing. Uh, I actually am, while I worry about deficits, I'm, a little, I'm more bullish than most people are on them. I think we've actually made major progress on health care in this country, both in terms of putting more spending in the hands of the consumer. That's leading to, uh, I believe, less spending over time. And I think that health care spending will increase at a lower percentage in the future than others do. Therefore, deficits may not be as harmful as we think. Therefore, we may have room to increase them a bit with infrastructure spending. Well, for a guy who wasn't prepared for the question, it was a pretty, <laughs> pretty darn good, good answer. <laughs> I'm going to quickly, if I may, before I come back to you on the markets. If you had one area of infrastructure spending that you would like to see targeted yeah. in Tampa or nationwide, what would it be? Transportation. I mean, clearly, Florida is a state that desperately needs multimodal options, and that would include rail as an option. Rail, roads, Absolutely. bridges, bridges kind of infrastructure, water and sewer pipes. Market at all times. Autonomous, ride share, all these things all have got to be part of transportation. Markets at all times. Uh, yep. 
I knew you as a stock picker, stock picker. You've yeah. moved on to, to, to different kinds of investments in lots of ways, uh, private equity, real estate is a big thing. Markets at all-time highs today. How do you feel about the market as you look at it today? You know, you, know, you look at the big picture here of what we have really, uh, and, and forgetting who's, who's in the White House now, who's going to be in the White House, what we have is good economic growth and relatively low inflation. Sure, inflation may pick up a little bit in the years ahead, but the outlook for That's not all bad. It's not all bad, and the outlook for corporate profits is good. That should be a good, um, good uh, backdrop for uh, good uh, market performance and yet in the years ahead. You and ahead. I were talking before in the cafeteria, and yep. you said it is tougher today to be a stock picker than it's ever been. Why do you think that is? You know. Supply and demand, I, I do think it is much more difficult in 2016 than it was 20, 30 years ago when I entered the business in terms of outperforming an individual stock picking. And I really think it's been over time a lot of smart people have gone into the business. And, uh, you know, the, the competition always makes things more difficult. And at the same time, uh, in terms of the information flow, there's fantastic information out there in terms of earnings transcripts, et cetera. So it's a very level playing field, which is, which is good for the public, which is very positive overall, but it's made it more difficult to outperform. So I think for the average viewer out there, if they're thinking about their portfolios long term, I think there's a mix that needs to be with, a, with some with active portfolio managers, mm -hmm. very well, uh, very well thought through and just those who can outperform and it's a small group, but also also quite a bit of passive included with it. Tampa Bay Lightning doing well. Yes. Liverpool doing well. The Red Sox, a playoff team. Thank you. Doing well, Mr. Bennett. Well, we like all that, yes. Mayor, thank you. He's a great partner, Tyler. I'm sure he is. Same Thanks here. Thanks very much. Yes. Gentlemen, appreciate it.